entering clothing optional area. Good morning, Wonder Hussy here, down in fabulous, sunny Arizona. I've been to Arizona three times in the last two months, but hey, you can't blame me because it's really cold up in Nevada right now, and I wanted to come someplace where I didn't have to wear a friggin' jacket, or even pants for that matter. <laughs> That's right, I'm back in uh, Quartzsite, Arizona again. Uh, this is a part of Arizona right over on the California border on the west side of the state. And well, it's really popular this time of year with snowbirds, people who live in their vehicles, because, well, it's just a ton of BLM land around here. And that's BLM as in the Bureau of Land Management, AKA federally managed lands that are our public lands. And you can camp for free, uh, depending on the local regulations. Well, there's areas out here where you can park for like 90 days at a time. Or I don't know if it's 90 days, it might be 60 days. Anyway, there's a bunch of federal lands out here where you can basically just post up all winter long. And this town of Quartzsite, I think it's like population 35 most of the year, but huh. Well, during January, February, the population swells to like a million people, and that's no exaggeration. Now, I already made a video all about the big quartzite get-together, which is kind of like a swap meet and a jamboree for people who live in their cars. So you can watch that if you're interested. But this year, I'm actually camping in a different area outside quartzite. <laughs> this is an area for a very particular kind of snowbird. Naked ones. <laughs> That's right, you can see next to my rig, there's my friend's van, and well, he is sitting in there doing some work on his laptop naked. <laughs> that's right, this is actually a section of desert outside Quartzsite that's legally designated by the feds as a place where you can camp naked. It's called the Magic Circle, and it's I guess it's pretty popular. I mean, technically, I'll be honest, the Magic Circle proper is right back that way. I don't know if you can see, but there's a ton of RVs sort of scattered around the desert out there. And then there are these sort of red signposts marking the edge of where the naked camp area ends. And well, me and my friend are just outside that area. Uh, mostly because we didn't want to be crowded in with a bunch of other people, but it's not really that crowded. Uh, the real reason is uh, the Magic Circle is what's called an LVTA long or LTVA long-term visitor area. And that's where I think you can camp for I don't know if it's 60 or 90 days at a time, but you do have to get a permit and you have to pay some kind of fee. And well, we just wanted to camp out for a couple nights. So we didn't uh, want to go into the magic circle proper. We just posted up right outside it, but close enough to where we can go take a walk and see if there's anything interesting to see. Now making a video about this is slightly problematic because you can't show any nudity on YouTube or if you can show it, then you can't monetize the video. So I'm gonna be, or I'm gonna try to be very creative in my shooting angles and well, I'll stay above the equator or between the 45th and the 90th meridian and oh gosh, I'll just try to shoot anything that's not perceived as bad by society. Okay, well, since it's such a nice, warm, sunny day, uh, up in the upper 70s in mid-January. This is the perfect day to take a walk around the magic circle and see what we can see from a distance or discreetly. Obviously, I don't want to violate anyone's privacy. There are a lot of people camped out naked over there. And well, also, like I said, I want to monetize this video. But I packed a few things in a backpack, uh, you know, a mask, in case uh, I get into a conversation with anyone, uh, my car keys, and a dress, uh, just in case I need to get dressed for whatever reason. I don't think that'll be an issue. And then I made myself a nice, delicious, frosty Campari and, well, Campari and White Claw. And I'm gonna take a little walk around this. There's a trail 
that goes all the way around the perimeter of the magic circle. I think it's about three miles, three and a half miles long. So it should be just the perfect length for a nice, beautiful winter's afternoon walk in the buff, in the great outdoors. Oh, I see this little footpath here. This is the walking trail that goes around the perimeter. So we're just gonna follow this. You might be able to see there's a lot of shoe prints, footprints. So it's obviously very well traveled. And another thing it tells us is that, well, even nudists wear shoes. <laughs> there's very few people that walk around here barefoot because of all that cactus. So I guess shoes don't really count as clothes, which speaking of that, that's about all I'm wearing. And my watch and my hat and my glasses. But I just think it's so cool that there's all these little campers tucked away here and there among the bushes and cactus. And they're all camping naked. <laughs> I just think it's so cool that the BLM actually legally allows people to camp out naked here. Because, you know, I've had my share of, well, I've had my share of run-ins over the years being naked in public. Uh, for many years, I worked as a nude model, you know, for photographers. I would take photographers out to the desert and they would take these photographs of me laying on rocks or like climbing around old abandoned mines and stuff like that. Like kind of artsy stuff for the most part. And well, I did get busted a couple of times doing that, but you know, we were always let off with a warning. Don't do that where people can see you. And then another time I was camping with my girlfriend, Jessica, right outside the Salton Sea, uh, down in far, far Southern California in the desert. Well, a couple winters ago, she and I were camped way back in a little side canyon. Oh wait, hold on. BLM 5. I'm not really sure what that means, but that's a big red 4x4. I'm pretty sure that's one of the markers that separates the naked from the clothed. Well, I know which side I want to be on. <laughs> How about you? Anyway, back to my story. Uh, so my friend Jessica and I were camping on some BLM, which is federally managed land, public lands, free to camp, outside the Salton Sea, way outside in a box canyon, way east of the Salton Sea. And we were hanging out at our camp one morning, and this was remote, man. We went way down a dirt road. There was nobody around for miles and miles. So we were just hanging out at camp one morning. Uh, you know, we we're both kind of slow to get going in the morning. And so I was taking advantage of the nice warm weather, it was, I think it was February, to do some naked sunbathing. So I was just kind of hanging out naked, you know, brushing my teeth, making coffee, and a BLM ranger drove by our camp, <laughs> you know, at a distance, like oh, maybe about as far as that RV is from us. And he just kind of cruised past and didn't stop. And so I thought, huh, oh, okay. Uh, my understanding of the legality of nudity on public lands was and is still really unclear. Uh, it's really complicated. I think it varies depending on where you are, all kinds of things. But I sort of had a rudimentary understanding that it was okay to be naked on public lands as long as you were out of sight of anyone else, like kids or families or whatever. So I wasn't really worried about it. I just, you know, he kept driving and I continued about my morning, making my coffee, brushing my teeth, washing my face, you know, all the things you do every morning to get your day started. Well, wouldn't you know it, <laughs> he came back about five minutes later, the same BLM truck came back by my campsite and kind of pulled to a stop, but at a distance, you know, like you could tell he was kind of waiting for me, like waiting for me to put my clothes on so he could approach the camp. And so I thought, oh God, here it goes. I'm in for it now. So I put my clothes on and drove over real slow and parked, but he turned out to be super cool. He actually wasn't busting me or he wasn't, you know, chewing me out or dressing me down or anything, so to speak. He just wanted to let me know that there were, they had found a stolen car in the wash, farther, farther up the wash, they had found a stolen car. So there was gonna be some sheriffs and a tow truck and police, whatever, a bunch of other vehicles would be coming up there. And he just wanted me to know in case I wanted to get dressed. Anyway, since he's, seemed super friendly and he was really friendly nice guy i thought oh here's my chance i'll ask him so i go well while you're here let me ask you what is the law regarding nudity on public lands and he was more than happy to chat he was super cool like i said he said it varies uh depending on the blm district so we were down there in the imperial imperial valley district i think and so there he said i'll never forget the way he said this 
it's perfectly legal to recreate nude on public lands as long as you're two miles from a developed campsite or a road. And in retrospect, I wish I would have asked him to clarify what he meant by road because, well, my girlfriend Jessica and I drove to our campsite on a dirt road. Yeah, it was a rough dirt road, but it was a road, so we weren't two miles from it. So does that count as a road or does it have to be a paved road? Or, yeah. Uh, but basically in that district anyways, you have to be at least two miles from a developed campground or a road, and then it's perfectly legal to be naked. Uh, all day, every day, I think. But then here's where the story gets really crazy. <laughs> After he explained the laws to us, he goes, Hey, do you guys go to Burning Man? And I said, well, yes, I do, as a matter of fact. And he goes, oh, yeah, I, I worked there last year, and I'll be working there again this year. Uh, if you've never been to the Burning Man Festival, big festival up in northern Nevada on this big desert dry lake bed, and it's like 80,000 people running around, many of whom are naked, half-dressed, wearing crazy costumes. Uh, they have, it's held on BLM land, the festival is held on BLM land, so they have a number of BLM officers that sort of patrol the event, uh, to, mostly to make sure that people don't violate or desecrate the playa, you know, by dumping their RV black water or, you know, pooping or peeing or whatever, just defacing the playa. So there's a number of BLM officers that actually get paid to go to Burning Man, and this guy was one of them. So he said, yeah, his first year had been the previous year, but he was coming back again this year. This was in 2019. Okay, this was the last year they had Burning Man, actually. Um, don't know if they'll do it again because of COVID. Uh, anyway, so he said, oh, you're going to be there next year. Well, I'll be there too. I go, oh, okay, well, I'll, I'll look you up. So, you know, this was February. Burning Man doesn't come until Labor Day weekend. But, you know, that following August, I went up to Burning Man. And by golly, I mean, I didn't even have a chance to ask around for him. He came to my camp. <laughs> it was the most amazing thing. This BLM, couple of them came driving up in their little UTV and they're like, Hey, is Wonder Hussy here? Because I told him my, you know, everybody has a nickname up there. They call it their playa name. <laughs> and his playa name, he had a playa name too. It was Finch, because his last name was Fincher, I think. So he went by Finch. So he, hey, is Wonder Hussy? Oh yeah, I'm right here. Hey! And I happened to be, well, I'll let you on a little secret. I happened to have just taken a bunch of magic mushrooms. And I was wearing this silver space costume with light up nipples and an electric vagina. But we took a picture together and he actually brought me a gift. You know how up at Burning Man it's a gifting economy, people are always giving each other gifts? Well he brought me two little plastic BLM Ranger drinking cups just as a gift. It was so nice of him. He was just such a nice guy. He came by later in the week too. He actually came by twice to see me. Uh, and it was just a really cool experience because I know a lot of people up at Burning Man have beefs with the Rangers, beefs with the law enforcement, and there can kind of be some friction between the two camps. And yes, I acknowledge the fact that I'm a woman, so being naked around a ranger is probably a lot easier for me than if I was some dude. But all that being said, I just thought it was like kind of a cool, positive interaction. And man, I really enjoyed meeting that ranger. And if you're watching this, Finch, here's to you. <laughs> oh, look, there's something interesting too in the distance there. I don't know if you can see in the distance there, there's that RV that has the uh, Confederate flag flying. And I can't tell what the flag next to it says. It might be a Trump flag. Oh, wow, well, yeah, look, it's that flag that's like Trump holding the gun all greased up and buff like Rambo. <laughs> hmm? Well, that's kind of cool because most people, if they think about nudists or anybody who would go camping in the desert naked, would kind of automatically assume, ah, oh, it's a bunch of goddamn hippies, liberals. Well, that's not the case. There's all kind of different people who enjoy well, who enjoy recreating nude <laughs> on public lands and, you know, lib liberals and conservatives. And that's what, I don't know, another cool thing about being at a place where everyone's naked is everyone's guard is kind of let down and, you know, we're not wearing our traditional armor, so to speak. So people tend to get along better no matter what their beliefs are. You know, now that I think about it, I don't think I've ever witnessed a fist fight or any kind of altercation between two naked people at any of the nude beaches or nudist camps or <laughs> nude hot springs I've been to. And you can see too, there's, there's a lot of pretty expensive rigs out here, you know? Some of these uh, class A motorhomes are not cheap. Like, well that one over there, I know that's not cheap. So that also goes to show that nudists aren't just a bunch of societal cast-offs. Apparently there's a lot of nudists with money, you know? Business savvy nudists. 
hey, you never know who might be a, well, I don't even want to call it a nudist. I don't even really call myself a nudist. I don't hang around my house naked. You know, and I don't think I would ever want to live in a nudist colony. And to be honest, I don't even really like going to those nudist colonies that you have to pay to go to and everyone's playing volleyball naked and it just seems too forced to me. I just like running around naked in the sunshine outdoors every now and then. So whatever you call that, nudist, naturist, well, I'm guessing most of these people are probably the same way and well, apparently some of them have a few nickels to rub together, so to speak. I don't know where they keep that money though. You don't have a wallet when you're naked because you don't have a pocket to keep it in. You know, another thing I'm noticing here is the whole time I've been walking on this trail, I haven't seen one single solitary piece of litter. And if you look at how many people are camping around here, and especially considering how windy it is today, you know, stuff blows away easily. It's pretty exceptional how clean this desert is. These people do a really good job of leaving no trace or leaving it better than they find it. In fact, uh, my friend that I'm camped with, well, he's been here a couple days, got here before I, I got here. He was talking to one of the naked campers here who'd been coming here for a long time, an old timer. And that guy was saying that originally they only had a much smaller piece of land designated to Camp Nude. But apparently the local BLM officials were so impressed with how clean they kept it that they gave them more land, kind of like as a bonus. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> I just passed a big group of naked people <laughs> sitting in a circle in camp chairs. <laughs> I mean, a big group, probably like 30 of them, just all hanging out naked in a big circle. And I walked by, waved at them, and just as I was walking past, they go, Hey, Wonder Hussy, <laughs> thought you looked familiar. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have enough time to chit chat today i got i'm on a mission i'm trying to get to the middle of this magic circle there's supposedly an actual circle where i guess in normal times there's a like a big tent like a central gathering place kind of like center camp at burning man but because of covid whatever this year they didn't put it up but i think there's still some kind of i don't know there's like a rock labyrinth and it says magic circle there's some kind of central gathering place and I'm on a mission to get to that and then get back to camp before the sun goes down. Actually, I'll let you in on a little secret. Another reason why I didn't want to go talk to those people is, well, I ate a really big lunch before I set out on this walk, like a really big lunch. I had Del Taco, don't tell anyone. I actually went into town and I had carne asada fries and a strawberry shake. I was just really craving it, man. So. Consequently, I'm not really in the best of shape to be meeting new people or fans. But hey, that's another cool thing about these nudist places. No one judges you. I know a lot of people go, oh, I would never want to go to a nudist colony. I'm too out of shape or I'm too fat or I'm too old. And I'm not going to deny the fact that, yes, the young and beautiful people probably maybe get more attention or get ogled. I wouldn't even say there's much ogling going on at these places. These people are so used to seeing nudity that it's not like everyone's just like leching on each other, perving on each other. People are just going about their business. So if you don't have a perfect Malibu Barbie bikini body, or you know, if you just ate a bunch of fries and drank a giant milkshake, well, it doesn't matter because people really don't care. I know that's really hard for most people to understand or wrap their head around, they just assume that these nudist places are just hotbeds of hedonism. And unfortunately, I have found that to be the case at like how I was saying earlier, I don't like to go to these established nudist resorts because unfortunately, in my experience, I have found there to be a higher concentration of swingers and sexual deviants. <laughs> just kidding. If you're a swinger, that's cool. It's just not my scene. I, well, I kind of pride myself or in a way, make it my life's mission to separate nudity from sexuality. I am perfectly capable of walking around the desert naked all day and not think about having sex once. It's nothing to do, one has nothing to do with the other in my book. But I know there's a lot of people for whom, well, that's either hard to understand or impossible to abide by. So, well, for those people, you probably wouldn't want to come to a place like this. You might get kicked out pretty quick anyways, because a lot of these places are very strict with their, uh, code of conduct like I did go you know I have been to a couple nudist resorts in my day and the first one I went to 
they were pretty, I think they were pretty strict about no, well, how do I say this? No physical displays of arousal. You know, it's like bad form. Basically, it's bad form to get a boner, okay? Oh, wow, well, look, isn't that a Marine Corps flag? Sure is, look at that, a naked Marine. And there's a Gadsden flag, you know, one of them yellow ones that says, don't tread on me. Wow, there's even some naked Texans. You know how they say everything's bigger in Texas? Well, I ought to go over there and find out. <laughs> Man, this camp here even has a thin blue line. You know, Blue Lives Matter flag? Just goes back to what I was saying earlier, that huh, all kinds of folks like to hang around in the desert naked. Oh gosh, well, I don't know. I thought my friend told me there was some area where they had written out the words magic circle and rocks and there was a rock labyrinth and kind of like a little uh, central focal point but there's nothing oh wait there goes my friend that i'm camped with <laughs> he's riding that one wheel have you ever seen one of those like a skateboard with one big wheel and it's motorized <laughs> well he's riding it naked so i gotta be careful but let me catch up with him he'll tell me where the labyrinth is <laughs> man it looks like so much fun to ride that thing but I can't even skateboard or surfboard and well riding it naked I just feel like that's a lot of exposed flesh that can get well scraped up pretty badly anyway he told me this the thing that says magic circle is actually right over here yay we found it the magic circle <laughs> there's my friend's one wheel <laughs> how cool is that they wrote it in white rocks I got here just in time before the light died. Yay, now I feel like I made my mission. I can head back to camp. And well, to be honest, it's getting kind of chilly. So I might want to put on some clothes. Ugh, finally back at camp. You know, it's a lot of fun running around the desert, naked in the sunshine. But when the sun goes down, well, that's when you realize that clothes really aren't so bad after all. <laughs> <laughs>